So I want to introduce everybody to Julie Hughes. Julie is a client of mine, and we've been working together for quite a while now, maybe a year and a half, and I wanted to bring her on to talk to you guys about um, how she created her dream from really not even knowing what her dream was. She knew that she was unhappy in her role as a physical therapist and wanted to do something different, but she really didn't know. So Julie's story is interesting because she had to figure things out. And so today she's going to talk about what it took to make her dream come to life. And I just want to introduce Julie Hughes. Hi. Hi, Julie. <laughs> so Julie, tell us briefly who you are, what you do, and how you describe the dream that you have brought to life. Sure. So I'm Julie Hughes. I have a doctorate in physical therapy and I am currently, um, I have my own business and I am a pain recovery coach. So I get to work one-on-one -on -one with clients who, um, who have persistent pain. So they have pain, have had pain longer than six months and it, it's just, it's not getting better or it's just the same and they're not doing what they want to be doing. Okay. So you help people um, not just manage their pain, but actually recover from their pain. Yeah. We know now that that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. And I use my own experience that I can, I can say that because I believe that I have recovered. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something that I, I want people to know that that's a possibility or that you can live well with pain. Um, yes, you can, and so can you tell us a little bit about where you started and you're a doc, you have a doctorate in PT, you're very, well, you were a PT for a long time, and so what, why did you want to, how did you know it was time for you to do something different? I think for a while I always had this dream to have my own practice, mm -hmm. um, but I just didn't think that, you know, confidence, oh, you can't do it. Or, you know, I just listened to the naysayers for many, many years. And it, it wasn't until I, I think, went through my own experience of pain and realized, okay, this is how we need to be doing this. This is how we need to be helping people. And I just, in my mind, I just didn't think that <clears throat> how I wanted to do it would be, would happen in a clinic I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted it to go a certain way. And so that's why I stepped out of the clinic. So you were tired of working within somebody else's paradigm. Yeah. And I, and I, to be honest, I'm, our system isn't the greatest. And I was tired of the insurance companies dictating to me how, how to, how to treat mm -hmm. people when, okay, I went to school. This is what I do. Um, they may not need to see me twice a week for mm. four weeks, you know, and I wanted to have that flexibility because I think that puts a lot of pressure on, on both the, the patient, the client and, and me. So it was nice to be able to step away from that system and, and really, I think just do the right thing. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of um, courage though. So I wanted to talk about when we have to be afraid and do the thing anyway, it must be very important to us and you must really feel deeply about it. So I'm curious, why is bringing this dream to life so important to you? Why do you want it so badly? Because there are so many people that are in pain and I want them to know there is another option that they don't have to just live with it. They don't have to stay the status quo. There are other ways and other, um, and not necessarily treatments, but there's another, another way to, to look at their situation and, and, and how can we make this better into, and that's why I call myself a coach because really I'm, I'm walking alongside them, helping them in that regard. You're like a guide. Yeah. I'm a facilitator, yeah. I guess. You're not so, fixing it for them. They have to do the work, but you're, you're teaching them everything they need to know. Right. So you needed to do this work because you were in pain and you figured out how to overcome and deal with your pain. You learned a lot of different strategies. And you can see that there's so much, so many people in pain in the real world. Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, I didn't realize these other strategies, like I was managing my pain, I think fairly well, 
but I would still have these setbacks and I noticed the setbacks were getting worse and mm-hmm. I wanted answers. Mm-hmm. Why is this happening? What, you know, I, I didn't, for me, I didn't truly understand my pain and that bothered me and it bothered me because, okay, I'm supposed to be helping people mm-hmm. with pain. I need to- PT at the time. Yes. yes. Gotcha. So when you knew that you had to change up the paradigm and, and move into something where you were more in charge, um, what painful or harmful or destructive feelings or thoughts came up for you? What did you battle with? Yeah, I battled, you can't do this. Who do you think you are? You don't know anything. Um, wonder if it doesn't work. Uh, you have pain yourself. How are you going to be able to do this? You know, I think I, um, I just came up with all sorts of excuses. So now you're calling them excuses, but they were really real at the time, right? Like they were the key thing keeping you stuck. Yeah. Because I, I, again, I think for a long time I, I, I had this idea that I wanted to have my own clinic. Um, but again, you just think, Oh, you can't do that. Right. And, Oh, you have children now, so you can't do that. How, how are you going to be able to start a business? And right. I remember when we first started working together, that was a very big question that you had. Like, can a mom, and your kids are really little, uh, can a mom do this? And you're living proof that a mom can. But my next question is, <clears throat> as a mom who's leaving a private practice of somebody else's, Uh, with a husband who has a very busy practice of his own and you have a lot of responsibilities, um, what had to shift in order to make your dream reality? You know, what did you have to either give up or start doing or stop doing to make this dream happen? Well, I think the first thing I I had to, and, and this was with working with you, I had to understand that I had to look at my thoughts and what I was telling myself Mm. really working on that, doing that model with you Mm. started to shift my thinking. And, and, and for me, it really started, it allowed me to believe in myself Mm. and to have a little more confidence. This, I love this answer because some people will say, Oh, like I stopped watching TV or I stopped drinking wine at night or I stopped uh, being on Facebook too much, but you went right to the real work, which is you shifted your thoughts, which is really hard work to do. Yeah. It's been such an honor to watch you like blow your own mind. Really. It's, it's amazing. <clears throat> so what is one thing that you wish you had known or you wish you had believed in the very beginning part of creating your dream? You know, I think it's that you're going to have a bad day. Mm-hmm. You're going to fail at something. You're not going to know how to do something. Mm-hmm. You are going to be like, what the hell am I doing? You know, and it's okay. It's totally okay. And this is what I learned from you. That's normal. That's fine. It doesn't mean you have to stop. It doesn't mean you, oh, this isn't for me. You, you just are like, okay, yeah, I'm having a bad day. Or eh, I didn't get everything I wanted to do. It's okay. This is the journey. This is this is how it's going to go. This is how it's going to be. And I think once I accepted that, I I don't know, that has helped me to just accept that you're not going to know how to do everything. (laughs) I mean, who does, right? Who does? Like I'm very hard on myself. So I'm thinking, okay, I should already have boom, 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 ready to go. And why am I still stuck here? Like, it's okay. You're going to, you know, and that whole thing is, oh, you're going to circle back. And that's totally Mm -hmm. fine. And you I, know, sorry, go ahead and I'll finish. Yeah. And I, I just think that was really, that really helped me that, that really just oh, to kind of expect failure, but yeah. And be okay with it. Like, yeah. and that's a lot of, I think what, what I'm asking my clients to do too, is right. you're going to have setbacks. That's okay. We don't just stop. We're going to keep going through that. We're going to work through that together. Right. And then you're going to be able to notice that your setbacks are going to be less and not as severe. And that is like this, like now I get a little freaked out. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's normal. I'm just going to keep going. Like I don't stop. <laughs> you know, earlier, earlier today, we had a call where we were talking about your little guy who's going into kindergarten. Yeah. 
And I, we talked about, you know, when people go into kindergarten, we don't expect them to know how to do all the stuff on the first day. And when they make mistakes, we're like, of course you made a mistake because you've never done this before. You've never gone to kindergarten before. You don't know how it feels on the first day. And you don't know how it feels on the second month. And you don't know how it feels on the fifth month. Like we give kids so much grace to figure stuff out and yeah. circle back around, but we don't really do that to ourselves very well. No, no. So that has been, that has just helped in many things in my life to, mm -hmm. to just have that permission <laughs> that it's okay that you don't know how to do it and you're going to figure it out. Um, that was really helpful. So it's almost like permission to not know how. Yeah. This is how, why would you know how you haven't done this before? <laughs> so true. You know, it's, like, it's like, we'll have kids. I didn't know how to be a mom. Did you know how to be a mom? I didn't know how to be a mom. I figured it out. I dropped my kid a couple times on his head and, <laughs> <laughs> fed him the wrong thing and but I figured it out he's still alive <laughs> right right <laughs> so I wanted to ask you how when you you have really come from because uh, I'm going to take you through your, your iterations of where you were just to kind of look back yeah. you were a, a doctor of PT which you still are like nobody can ever take that away from you and you still are a physical therapist at heart you love movement and you really love anatomy and the body like you just love all of it and when you first wanted to get out you wanted to you were doing um, coaching for an MLM like being kind of a fitness and health coach and that just wasn't feeding you mm -hmm. and then you really love running so then you wanted to be a running coach and you you played around with that and you were just like that's just not it yet and then you kind of was like, like you blew your own mind that day that you were like I suffer with this thing this pain and I really want to help other people who are suffering and you're like can I invent this, this job called pain recovery coach? And I was like, of course you can invent anything you want. So from this like place of working for the man and, you know, being a PT and working within that paradigm to a couple of like, I'll call them false starts, but they were just data points. Like that's not what it is. And that's not what it is. And that might be what it is. And now you have workshops that you give and you have signature talks that you give and you have a small group coaching program and you also have private coaching like you've created a program for yourself and for your to, to benefit your clients mm -hmm. how do you see like how amazing this is like can you can you understand like all that you've done no i i think i'm so like okay this is great i didn't think i don't know I, but again i think this is just how i had to go you know? Right. And the, the thing I want to point out is that it's taking you, taken you about 18 months to figure all this stuff out. And a lot of other people would have given up by now mm -hmm. because they would have been like, Oh, forget it. It's just easier to go back and get a job. But you, you did, and you thought that a couple of times, but you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And now here you are with a program, you have marketing, you write a blog, you have social media presence, you are doing it, but it didn't take, it wasn't overnight. Can you speak to what that felt like a little bit, like what that 18 months felt like? Uh, <laughs> it's funny because I felt, I think I was, there were times where I was embarrassed because I'm like, why do I keep changing? Is something yeah. wrong with me? You know, that's my old Julie talk. Oh, something's wrong with you, you know? Um, but as I was going through this, you know, when I was doing the run coaching, a lot of what I heard, oh, I'm not running because of pain, or I'm not running because I, I, I don't want to hurt this old injury that I had. And, and that really resonated with me. And I think that is what's kept me going, is because I can relate to the pain. I can relate to these things being said to me. And I... And I just want to help people so that they're not. They're not as lost as you felt and they're not as alone yeah. as you felt. Yeah, I guess, yes, that's perfect. Um, because they're really, just so they have, an, there's another option. Yeah, you've created that. And so I want to point out now that <clears throat> if you didn't do this 18 months of work mm -hmm. to get here, there would be a lot of people who are still in pain. And so I wanted to ask you, how do you think the better world, the world is a better place because you've made this thing happen? Well, I hope to think that it has least, it's given people the opportunity to look at pain differently and to rethink it because what, 
what we have been taught is outdated now and, and, and we really need to be we really need to all be on the same page and updated and so I think that by me just getting this out out there and getting this information out there I hope that it starts conversations I hope that it starts other clinicians and providers to maybe oh let me look at this new information um, and and how can I how can we better help mm -hmm. those who are dealing with pain and who who maybe want to you know get off their medications or at least lower the dose yeah who want, you know that that's huge and then imagine how all the people that you help they help somebody else they're going to share this information because it's not proprietary right like you you want people to share this information and i actually edit <clears throat> julie's content for her sometimes and just by reading the stuff that i edit and then rereading it again when it comes through in my email i've learned so much from her just passively that it affects my own pain mm -hmm. and that i move more because of what reading your stuff has done for me so i know it's made my life better Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. I didn't know so that. I have, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, you really don't know how powerful your work is. Um, so there are a lot of women out there like you. They're tired of working for somebody else. They're tired of working in a paradigm that doesn't feed them anymore. They know that they've accomplished something or figured something out. And they really want to help other people figure that out too. And I call these people creative women. Mm -hmm. but they really remain stuck like they want to get here but they're here and there's this giant like they're terrified of what's underneath here because they feel like they don't have a net and so they kind of need to make a leap and I know that in order to make that leap they kind of have to kind of put fear on their back and jump with fear because it's not like the fear ever goes away right, right. <clears throat> so what advice would you give to this creative woman who's afraid to make the jump um I guess what I could say is if this is something, you know, this idea you have, it's not going to leave you. Mm -hmm. You know, I had this idea eight years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it hasn't left me. It's not going to leave you. And, and, and this idea, you got to give it a try or it's just going to sit there with you and it's going to be on your back plus the fear. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just think if you really, you have this idea, you're passionate about it you know that it has helped you or it has helped someone else, that it's important to get it out mm -hmm. there. And I think that's what's kept me going is I'm practicing what I'm preaching and it's helping me. Mm -hmm. And I know that I, I've, I've got to get the idea out there. And so it, it makes your life better and it makes other people's lives better. Yeah, it's going to, it changes the world. It's going to change the world. It, mm -hmm. Even if it's just in this little community mm -hmm. or, it, or just in your little family and friends, you can't keep that idea to yourself. You've got to let it out there. <laughs> I love this idea that's just kind of nagging at you. It just won't leave you alone. Yes, I didn't know you had this for eight years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, <clears throat> I did it, kept nagging. Oh, I wonder if. And, Oh, I can't do that now. I'm pregnant or, oh, you can't do that now. Now you have another one on the way. And, but it kept, it didn't leave me. <laughs> yeah. And life keeps happening, right? It, yeah. it, there's always going to be something. Exactly. exactly. Oh, we bought a house or we're selling our house or we're moving to a new area or whatever. There's always sure. going to be something. Sure. Oh, this is such good stuff. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with creative women who have an idea, but they can't activate on it? Um, well, I think get support to help you with that idea. So if it's not you, Jen, I don't know who it would be. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> so good. Yourself. Um, I, I think definitely having, you've got to have that support on your low days too. Yes. To be able to reach out to someone and just know, yeah, oh, it's normal. It's fine. Yep. I feel that way too. Just keep going. Don't give up. Yeah. Keep that's really important that you say that, that the person that supports you, and it might not be your husband, and it might not be your partner. No, it won't they, be. I don't they think might it be so sick of your bullshit that they are not listening to you anymore. Yes. So you got to have that support either in person or online or whatever. Yeah. Um, but to reach out to those people on your low days, which you, you do, you're very good about that. And I had to kind of teach you to, yeah. to do that. <clears throat> um, but to, to know that if you're surrounded by support of people who never have bad days, that's hard too. 
you know, I, I love to tell you guys when I have a bad day because it makes you, it makes yeah. everybody feel more normal, right? Yeah. So this idea of our, our support, we have to really be careful about who we ask to support us mm -hmm. because we want it to be our spouses and sometimes it cannot be. Yeah. They, they just can't be everything for us. Right. And I don't think if, and again, if it's, and I don't know if it has to be someone who has a business to understand either, right. but yeah, I think you just need other people to, to reach out to. Oh, this is so good. So Julie, thank you so much. Can you tell us, I know that you have a couple of um, free speaking gigs coming up. Yeah. And I know that if you live locally to Syracuse, Julie will be at Core Life Eatery on September 15th? Yep. Okay. September 15th. But tell us like what else is beyond that. So if we miss that or this is a replay that people are seeing, um, how else can people get in touch with you or attend one of your workshops or become part of your, your tribe? Sure. Um, so I have a website. It's juliepainrecoverycoach.com. Okay. And there you can access... Um, you can sign up for the newsletter, you can access my blog, and then I also now have an events tab. So mm -hmm. I do have a workshop coming up October 14th, so the first steps to overcome pain. And then I'm also creating a small group coaching program that will start also in October. So that's all going to be on my website. And I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay, and are your, are your social media handles all on your website? Yes. Okay. But we're looking for yes. Julie Hughes, pain recovery coach. Yeah. Yep. And there's not many pain recovery coaches out there, are there? I don't think so. <clears throat> yeah. You're a maverick in your not field. I'm in Syracuse. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I would like to tell people that even if they can't work with you because they're not local to Syracuse, that your newsletter and blog are, are very, very valuable and that they should at least sign up for those because I know that some people are going to see this and be out of the Syracuse area, but your stuff is really helpful just, just even to consume. Yeah, that would be great. I, okay. I just think, um, yeah, because a lot of this stuff is, is, is new and we haven't heard it. And so I think it's important just to, even if you don't hurt, I think it's important as a society to know really what pain is, but what pain isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Julie, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I know you're very busy. So thank you. Oh, thank you, John. Thanks a lot. It was My great pleasure. To you. Yeah, this was fun. Okay, bye. Bye, bye Julie. <laughs> bye.